Hello everyone, and welcome to On the Stoa. My name is John, and together, let's dive into a philosophy that has nurtured and guided the greatest men and women of history, and see how we can use it to live a more meaningful life. Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in this week, and I hope it's been a good one. This week, we'll be discussing the concept of perception and how it relates to Stoicism. Perception is defined as the action of interpretation by the senses of the mind. It's the final product of our mind's analysis of events happening around us. But to properly explain perception and its relation to Stoicism, we first have to dive into the Stoic theory of cognition. The Stoic worldview holds that the world is organized in a rational and coherent way by an all-pervading force known as the Logos. On the cosmic scale, the Logos governs the organization of the universe, while on the individual scale, it's the faculty of reason. With that being said, the Logos infuses and is wielded by what the ancient Stoics called the Igemonikon, or the intellectual part of our consciousness. It's this part of us that uses reason and logic to make sense of the world. One of the primary roles of this part is to process and assess the data that we receive from our senses, and it's through this that perception is created. In every instance we're awake, we're bombarded with objects and events that give impressions. From here, the mind will generate a fantasia, or a mental impression. Think of it like light from the world being imprinted on a photographic negative. From this mental impression, the mind generates an epilepsis, or perception, like a print being made from the photographic negative. We then interpret the world from this perception and make decisions based off of this. Now ideally, we'd like to think that our perception mirrors the likeness of the world, but like a print, it may not be. It could include things that distort or obscure the original, things like emotions, past life experiences, the values and morals we hold. It all influences each perception that we make. One of the distortions that we as humans often make are inappropriate value judgments, or the designation of things to be good or bad when those things hold neither value. As an example of what I'm talking about, let's take a look at a section of Gregory Hayes' introduction to Marcus Aurelius' meditations. Quote, My impression that my house has just burned down is simply that, an impression or report conveyed to me by my senses about an event in the outside world. By contrast, My perception that my house is burned down and I have thereby suffered a tragedy includes not only an impression, but also an interpretation imposed upon that initial impression by my powers of epilepsy. End quote. Events that happen in this world are simply that. Events. What value we decide to attribute to them is determined by what we interpret these events to be. All events that happen in life are determined by the logos, and said events follow in an unbreakable chain of cause and effect. Certain events may feel random, but they were the result of causes that are most often unknown to us. Perception is a wonderful tool, one that helps us stay alive each and every day. But sometimes, the way we use this tool can make our lives harder than it frankly needs to be. In spite of this, though, there are three ways that we can start to improve our perception, and we'll discuss those ways after a brief message about Anchor, this episode's sponsor. Welcome back. Perception can make your lives harder or easier, and like I said earlier, here are three ways we can start to improve our perception. The first way is the reason to understand. Have you ever gotten into an argument with someone and then later realized you're arguing the same point just in a different way? Or you and your partner are fighting over something but just can't seem to come to an understanding? Take the time to logically look at the other person's views and what they're saying and why they're saying it. Our brains can create perceptions that our view is the right one and may not like the contrasting viewpoint held by the other person. This can blind us to potentially eye-opening concepts and lead to conflicts like the ones I mentioned earlier. When we're able to listen and understand why someone has the views they have, even if we disagree with them, we train our brain to look and analyze the situation not based on emotion but on the facts that present themselves during the events we go through. The second way to improve our perception is to choose wise impressions. Every day when bombarded with information about everything, from the news to a simple website, the chances of information abound in the world, chances that stand to alter our perception in a negative way. When learning and absorbing new information, make sure it's from a reputable, honest source. Remember, information we get makes an impression from which we create our perceptions. 
So the more accurate the information, the more clear our perceptions will be. In addition to this, be aware of certain cognitive biases that may cloud your perception. Things like confirmation bias can lead us to forget a perspective that is crucial in gaining a proper view of the whole. So being aware of cognitive biases and actively working to prevent them from clouding one's perception will help maintain a clear view. The third and final way we can improve our perception is by shifting our focus. Life is by no means a comfortable ride. There are ups and downs, bumps and pitfalls, and many hardships that we are to overcome. If something bad happens, don't just focus on how the event made you feel. Focus on things you can take from the event. If you get sick, instead of wallowing in the suffering, focus on getting better and what you think led to you getting sick in the first place and figure out what you can do to protect yourself in the future. Use the pain to become a better person. If you and your lover don't work out, see the sadness as a result of the loving the person and that you're on the path to recovery. See it as a time to find yourself again and become a better person better version of the person that went into the relationship. When we learn to shift our focus, we learn to see things from a multi-dimensional format rather than from just one frame. It's important to note here though that perception can be a hard thing to shift. The human mind, once fully formed, tends to be resistant to change. However, when you begin the journey of going inside and actively changing the way you perceive the world around you, you can slowly build up the clarity needed to accurately see the world for what it is. Hayes later writes in his introduction that, quote, Our duty is therefore to exercise stringent control over the faculty of perception with the aim of protecting our mind from error. End quote. As you go through this week, ask yourself, in what ways do my views and interactions affect the way I perceive my life? Am I choosing wise impressions? How can I reason to understand someone else's point of view? In what ways can I shift my focus and protect my perceptions? When we begin to monitor our perceptions and the things that influence them, we gain a method of control over our lives that we thought we never had before. Thanks for tuning in this week to On the Stoa, and I'll see you next time for another episode. Take care of yourself, and be well.